everybody, welcome to another short educational video from New Century Planning. My name is Bob Ryerson and I'm the founder of New Century Planning and I'm pleased today to welcome Greg Gillis. Greg is a certified financial planner in Benton, Arkansas and uh, runs his own financial planning firm and is an expert on life insurance as a retirement tool. So we're going to uh, learn a lot from Greg today. Greg, thanks for, for helping us out today. Glad to be here, Bob. All right, thanks again. So can you start by giving us a brief history of the use of life insurance, especially in terms of permanent or cash value insurance? I guess most people know there's two main types. There's cheap, cheap term insurance that has no cash, just covers you for a given term or period of time, pure death protection. But then there's various types of, of cash value insurance. And the government, we know, you and I, has granted a lot of, um, a lot of benefits to life insurance, has encouraged it. Uh, do you want to give a brief history of why that might be the case? Sure. And I'll, I'll skip over the, the fact that the ancient Romans uh, had a form of life insurance. We'll, we'll probably start a little, uh, a, a little sooner. Or, uh, so it goes back to Rome, Roman bit. times. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll skip ahead to more modern times. But, but life, <laughs> the idea of life insurance has been around uh, since then. So basically, the, the evolution of modern uh, cash value life insurance started with uh, whole life. So you pay the company premiums. They invest that money. They take some of it for the uh, the cost of insurance. They invest the rest of it with their uh, general bond portfolio. And that evolved into something called universal life, which was basically the same thing, but it allowed you to put a little more or a little less premium. So it was it was a flexible premium was kind of the, the, the term that came along then. Uh, then we had variable universal life, which instead of investing the the excess with the company's bond portfolio, they invested it in the market. So you were subject to all the, the ups and downs of the market. And then uh, with uh, the, the, the most recent iteration um, is uh, indexed universal life. And that's, that's a whole other thing. So you, you get to participate with the growth of the market uh, of an index uh, like the S&P 500, but in a down year, you don't lose money due to the market being down. So it's a it's sort of a, a hybrid, I guess you might say, of, of, of all of those things. OK, makes sense. Um, so let's fast forward to today, more recent times. How can people use life insurance to enhance their retirement? You and I are aware of a, of a book by a colleague of ours and a, a phrase called LIRP, L-I-R-P, and it stands for Life Insurance Retirement Plan. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? I know that most people uh, close to retirement say, I don't need life insurance. Quite the contrary. I'm done. You know, the, the, the house is paid. The kids are gone. So we know that the LIRP is used more for the RP than the LI, but the vehicle happens to be based on life insurance. Can you explain maybe what living benefits are or something about these newer policies that you and I would refer to as a LERP? Sure. Um, so for quite a while, uh, few decades probably, uh, life insurance has had something called a terminal illness rider. So if you have 24 months or, or fewer, you've been diagnosed to, you know, you're terminally ill and you have less than two years to live, the company will advance you uh, a portion of that death benefit. They can't give all of it to you, but they'll advance a, a good healthy portion of that death benefit to cover final expenses, or maybe you want to take a trip um, or, or you can do that. More recently though, and, and this is one that's a little more uh, relevant to most people is uh, chronic illness. So chronic illness is another way, uh, a more industry, uh, sort of industry phrase for long-term care. So if you are unable to perform two of your activities of daily living, transference, um, bathing, eating, those sorts of things, if you're, if a doctor says you're unable to do two of those six things, then the company will advance you a portion of the death benefit to cover things like nursing home or in-home care, uh, and that's a that's a much more relevant uh, for, for, for people that, that's on a lot of people's minds as opposed to the terminal illness. And there are a few other companies out there that have other uh, similar things. But the chronic illness is the far and away right. The, the biggest. Right. And we know statistically it, it's a horror show. I mean, I think according to the government statistics, 69, 70 percent chance that all of us will need that type of care before we pass on, whether it's for cognitive or physical reasons. So it's a big issue and it should be addressed for everybody in retirement if they can, as opposed to, you know, for years we did the long-term care insurance policies and they're good, they do the trick, but the 
the I guess the problem or some of the downside of a pure long-term care insurance policy is that you may pay these premiums for 25 or 30 years, die peacefully in your sleep at 95, and all the money stays with the insurance company. And, and they raise the premiums along the way. Uh, the LERP does what? If they use this, these newer life insurance policies with the chronic illness rider, uh, the difference is what? Right. So that's exactly right. With long-term care, if, if you, you pay the premiums and you didn't need it, they're not going to give you your money back. So it's a use it or lose it proposition. Chronic illness works a little differently. With that, it doesn't cost anything to add that feature to the, to the life insurance policy. It's, it's, and if you didn't need it, it never cost you anything. Beautiful. If you do need it, that's how the company pays for it. If, if you do need it, they'll advance a portion of that death benefit and they'll retain some of that to pay for the, the cost of, of giving you that money early. Um, and then that's how you pay for it. So there's no, there's no cost on the front end. It's only if you use it. Great. So that seems more efficient. So it's not a user loser proposition. And if you, uh, if you never need it, you never paid any, anything for it. But yet, depending on the size of the LERP or the size of the death benefit, there's a, what you're saying is there's a big pool of tax-free money that's available if you need it for this terrible situation, this chronic illness situation possibly, and then that money uh, can be used to protect and preserve the rest of the estate that was built up. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's, it serves uh, several functions. It could serve as the long-term care for the long-term care need. You've got this huge pool of, of money, which I, I'm, I'm sure we'll get into in a second, for taking money to, to spend in retirement. So it's tax-free for retirement. And then also the, the death benefit, which is, you know, at its core, it's life insurance. So uh, it, it's going to preserve your estate um, in that way as well. So in addition to the long-term care, which is a big issue for, for most of us, um, you mentioned uh, income in retirement. So walk us through that. Another living benefit. I mean, most, you know, most people in the old life insurance, somebody had to die in order for anybody to benefit. Here, you're saying with these newer policies, these so-called LERPs, you pay it for a while. And at some point, you can, I assume you can get back your own premiums. You can take out income for yourself and supplement your, your retirement with tax-free money that, that doesn't have to be paid back. Is that, that correct? Absolutely. So, so let's say, for example, that you've, you've paid in premiums for, you know, seven years, that's typical to, to, to pay for seven years. And then, you know, 12 years, 15 years from now, uh, you want to take some money. If you were to go to a bank and borrow money from that bank, uh, that loan is, is not subject to income tax. Same is true for, for, for this. You would be borrowing money from the life insurance company and they would be using your cash value as collateral against that loan. So it's tax free. It's, it's just like a loan from the bank in, in that regard. So you can take all this money from your policy tax free and, and spend it on whatever you want. Um, and unlike other instruments that might make you wait, uh, retirement instruments that might make you wait till age 59 and a half, you can do it at whatever age. And however much you want. And there's, I mean, it's really, it, it's up to you. Very flexible. All right. So that's interesting. So you mentioned seven years. So as opposed to paying something your whole life, you, you, we normally run these things six, seven, eight years. We let them bake a little bit, another two, three, four years. And then if we want either on a regular basis to supplement income or occasionally for trips or whatever, uh, we can take money back out. Basically we build it up and then we can pay ourselves back all our premiums and the policy stays in place and does other things for us, long-term care or legacy or whatever. So that's that's pretty flexible. That's a pretty nice benefit. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's like putting gas in a car. You want to make sure you, you get enough gas uh, in there to, to get where you're going. So you don't you don't want to pay it for you know two years or, or really even three. You you want to pay for a couple of years. But the the old the old whole life policies typically you had to pay for the rest of your life. And the idea of someone in their 90s still paying, you know. Twenty thousand dollars a year, whatever it is in premiums, it, it was was no was no fun. So so normally a seven year horizon for premiums or maybe a ten year horizon is about all you need, and that puts enough gas in the car uh, that you can later you know take the money out and use it for whatever. Nice. Okay, so that's a reasonable time frame, five to ten years. You mentioned also that um, because it's a loan, you know, if you take a loan from your uh, against your house or your 401k, within 30 days, you've got to be making some sort of payment. The difference with these loans, and these are intentional loans that we're not going to pay back, 
We built it up or we're just going to take it back. These loans don't have to be paid back at all, or they can be. It's good to pay them back if you can. Uh, you can use it almost as a, you know, there's a concept of be your own banker. But for purposes of retirement planning, if you want to take a nice supplemental tax-free income or an occasional amount, these are amounts that we're not planning to pay back. And, and because it's a loan, it's tax-free, right? Right. I mean, if, if you want to pay it back, you can. That's the, the be your own banker concept you mentioned, where you you take money from your policy instead of a bank, and then you you pay your you pay your policy back, and and that way you're not paying interest to a bank. That's a that's a great strategy. But generally, no people aren't going to pay that loan back. Uh, the the life insurance company will pay themselves back out of the death benefit. So you don't pay that back during your lifetime, and then when you pass away, the company you know keeps whatever was earmarked to repay themselves, and then your heirs get the balance. We, we build up over time a big pool of money. Uh, we talked about uh, supplemental tax-free income. We talked about long-term care, a big pool of tax-free money for long-term care if we need that. How about uh, if, if somebody has a big pool of money, uh, how about an opportunity fund, a private, if this is done correctly, we have a pool of money and let's suppose there's a credit crunch or let's suppose your neighbors, you know, some, if you hear about a house in foreclosure, there's some opportunity, silver's too cheap, stocks are too cheap. I mean, basically for somebody who's a little more sophisticated, this is, they can get their hands on a big chunk of money under any circumstances because there's a guaranteed loan provision in these policies pay it back, you know, whenever they want. So it, it's uh, th that flexibility aspect is, again, not for everybody, but I, I think it's worth mentioning that this this could be an opportunity fund or an emergency fund if things go wrong. Sure. I think a lot of people go into this with the intention of we're going to we're going to fund it for seven years. We're going to, you know, let it let it bake for a few more years. And then starting in year you know, 12 or 15, we're going to start taking money out each year to supplement our retirement. I think a lot of people get into it uh, anticipating that. But then when year 12 or 15 rolls around, they say, well, our spending has declined a little bit. We're not we're not going as hard at at age 80 as we were at age 65. So we don't need that that money every year. So they let it simmer uh, a little longer. And then when an opportunity uh, comes along, they've got a, a lot of cash. It's it's grown inside there because they weren't right. tapping into it every year. Um, and, yeah, they can they can use it for for a, an opportunity like that. Or again, the, the be your own banker concept where they take a huge chunk out and pay themselves back rather than doing that at a, at a bank and avoiding the interest. Right. And and these we should mention, and, and I think if these are attractive as a retirement planning vehicle for people in their 50s, 60s, even 70s, I imagine you're going to tell me that for somebody in their 20s, 30s, 40s who gets it, that doesn't always happen. But for somebody who's younger and rocking and rolling and making money, the LERPs are, are really incredible by the time you hit 55 or 60, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, what, what did what did Einstein say about uh, compound interest? It was the the eighth wonder of the world. I mean, it's it, imagine tax free uh, tax free compounding. Yeah, ta tax free compound. Yeah. So so imagine you know having something compound for you know thirty years uh, instead of fifteen or, or forty years instead of fifteen years. Right. Uh, it, it's huge. A unique tool that people should look at. Of course, it, it depends on your health. If you're not healthy, uh, uh, it's not gonna work as good. You gotta get approved, so it's not for everybody. Um, but one thing I want to mention is the money is productive here. Again, it takes a while. You know, I, I think I've heard you use the example of uh, a jet plane taking off. You know, There's a lot of inertia to overcome before the plane is at 30,000 feet. But when it's at 33,000 feet, that's a heck of an efficient vehicle, and it's, it's a fantastic thing. So it does take a little while. It's not a quick thing. Um, but the money is productive. I mean, over time, it's fairly cheap. It's expensive up front, like a mortgage. Gets a lot cheaper over time. I think averages 1% or 2% a year over time. But it can be productive, right? This money, you mentioned compounding over time. This money can be 4 5 6 7% a year over time or more. Yes, and, and historically, it's been maybe just a little more than that in, in the index universal life. Variable, you know, going back, the different products had different, um, different average rates of return. But yeah, it's not, it, it's not like a savings account that's just going to get you, you know, a couple of, of points. It's, you know, I think 7% over, over a long term is, is not unrealistic at all. Um, and uh, as you said, the expenses get lower with life insurance over time, uh, not, not more expensive. Uh, it gets less expensive. So, you know, over the over the, the span of your lifetime, which, you know, you, you go into this, keeping it 
for the rest of your life. Right. So you have right. to look. You have to look at at the cost over that uh, time horizon. Time frame. Right. And, and it might be one to one and a half percent uh, cost, which is not you know, you're you're going to pay that about anywhere you go. Um, and so to get something seven eight percent rate of return and to get it tax free, I mean, gross that up to what it would need to be in a brokerage account to to get you that eight percent. You would have to earn I don't know. 10 percent or so, eleven percent right. in a brokerage account to net that. Right to taxable, yeah, to get six or seven tax free. And I think people don't realize that even if they have money at Fidelity or Vanguard or whatever, you know, there's there's some fees they see in their mutual funds, uh, and there's some that they don't. And so uh, one to one and a half is pretty efficient over time for all the tax free benefits. And uh, so I just wanted to, for us to convey to people that this can be productive money. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be two or three uh, percent parking place. This can be productive. Uh, it can be very opportunistic. And again, the main reasons why we use this is to to address long term care, which is a big, big risk for people. Uh, and we're not wasting our time. If, if we never if we're fortunate enough to die peacefully in our sleep at 93, we didn't we didn't spend anything. All the money stays in the family. That's pretty powerful. We have a supplemental income if we need it. We can help with college funding, gifts, travel. It's it. Uh, so I just wanted to express the flexibility. So this is a a tool that we recommend uh, to anybody who thinks they can qualify, I guess, and and has the has the ability to fund it because we're basically taking money from the taxable world and getting it over to the tax free world over seven or eight or ten years, right? Yeah, and and. You know, in doing that, you're guarding yourself against uh, the tax train uh, that's that's coming. So, right. So we we are all concerned about higher taxes down the road. There's a lot of history in the country to show that tax rates have been higher. So uh, at this particular time here, early 2023, taxes uh, look like they may be heading higher. We have terrible deficits. So it's a uh, we didn't talk too much about it, but it's uh, we can insulate a big pile of money from future tax increases as well. So. Okay, great, great. Thank you so much for helping us out today and uh, educating us on LERPs. My pleasure, Bob. Good to see you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.